neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer, and today we are taking a look and installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Toyota Sienna. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when installed, and it is an exposed cross tube, so you are going to see the entire hitch, but it really doesn't look too bad on the back of the Sienna, and also just adding a hitch to the van really makes the best of the real estate of being able to put accessories on. And being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening means that you're gonna have a ton of options when it comes to ball mounts, bike racks, and cargo carriers, as this is kind of the standard size. And all of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip. Now this is not included with the hitch. A lot of your accessories will come with one, but if you wanna pick up a spare or a locking one, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. I really like the locking ones because you can leave your accessories in place, lock your pin, and know that they're gonna stay on your vehicle. You do have a plate style safety chain loop here. So if you do plan on pulling a trailer, you can get your standard S hooks in there pretty easily, as well as even a larger clevis style will go through. Now, if you are planning on towing a trailer, it does have some decent weight capacities here. We have a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds, and that's gonna be the weight of the trailer, plus the accessories loaded up. You also have a tongue weight rating of 350 pounds, and that's gonna be the pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So your suspended accessories like your cargo carrier bike racks, you have up to 350 pounds, which is pretty good. Now this can be used with a weight distribution hitch and it is gonna bump those numbers up. Your gross trailer weight rating is gonna to go to 5,000 pounds and your tongue weight will also go up to 500. Now it's important to check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and then compare that with the hitch numbers and take the lower of those two. That way you're not overloading any of your components. Now when choosing accessories, if you're getting a folding accessory or a ball mount, you want to make sure that you have clearance to either fold up your accessory or hook up your trailer without causing damage to the vehicle. In this one, you should have plenty of options because from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, we're looking at about three and a half inches. Now another important measurement is going to be our ground clearance, and this one comes in at 11 inches. So it's fairly low, and that's something that's definitely important. Um, you're going to want to make sure that when you have your accessories loaded up, that you're not going up any inclines as those can tilt towards the ground. And if you are planning on towing a trailer, you're more than likely going to be looking at a raised position ball mount. So go ahead and measure the coupler on your trailer, and that way you can get the proper one for your vehicle. Now, as far as the installation goes, this one's super easy to do in your driveway or garage in probably less than 30 minutes. You are going to be removing a plastic panel and trimming that up to make sure that it goes back in place. But the rest of it is just taking out some plastic covers that are in weld nuts, putting the hitch up, bolting it with the new hardware, torquing it down, and that's it. But we're going to walk through each step to make sure that you get your hitch installed. Our installation is going to begin by removing this panel on the driver's side and it's going to be a series of plastic push pins as well as 10 millimeter screws. As far as the plastic push pins, pretty easy. You have a slot on uh, four different sides here so you can kind of pry at any angle. Try to get that center portion to pull out first and then the rest of it should come with it. If not, you can pry on the larger end there. If you don't have a trim tool, you can use a flathead screwdriver. It also works pretty well. So as we look, there's a lot of different 10 millimeter screws. The one that we're gonna be looking for is if you kind of follow this mud flap here, it's the furthest one inside. So we'll go ahead and get that removed. So now that we have this one removed, we're gonna kind of move up and you'll see that there's one that's towards the rear of the vehicle here. We'll go ahead and get that one as well. You'll also see on the outside edge of the fascia here, this notch straight up is going to be another 10 millimeter. So uh, go ahead and get that taken down. Now we can go ahead and get our panel removed. You might have to kind of pry it a little bit. Uh, we are going to be trimming this up later to make sure that it fits. So make sure you have this fairly handy. Now with our panel removed, we're going to see where we're going to be mounting up our hitch. And it's going to be, uh, it's a flathead style plastic plug. So just with a flathead, kind of uh, twist these. And sometimes you got to put a little pressure on the backside for them to pop out. Um, but we'll go ahead and get these removed. And we're going to have them on the other side as well. And these are really nice because they protect our weld nuts from any corrosion getting up in there. And that way, when we put our hardware up, they should feed in pretty easily. Now at this point, we're going to need an extra set of hands to get our hitch up in place. So I grabbed Shane here. He's going to help me. We each have hardware in place uh, in our hand. That way we can get one started on each side and it will support the hitch. Now you have a conical tooth washer. These teeth are going to bite into the metal of the hitch. So just make sure you have them orientated properly. As we raise this up, we're just going to line that up with one of the holes and just get a few threads started on one of the bolts on each side. And that's going to make it way easier to get the rest of the hardware in place. 
Now with all of our hardware started and in place, I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up using a 19 millimeter socket. And we don't have to get crazy here because we're gonna be coming back with our torque wrench to make sure they're properly torqued down. But we do wanna snug this up, so go through and get those tightened down. Now with that 19 millimeter socket, we're coming back with our torque wrench. And we're gonna use the torque settings found in the instruction manual. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at e-trailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. But this is gonna be important. It's gonna make sure that it's gonna be tight enough, obviously, to keep the hitch in place, but also not be too tight and putting stress on those weld nuts. And we'll just go through and torque down the rest of the hardware. Now with everything torqued down, our hitch is officially installed. Uh, as far as our underbody panel, you can choose to put this back up. It is gonna require a little bit of trimming and it's really not gonna hurt anything if you don't put this back up. It's kinda up to you. And you can refer to your instruction manual on how to cut this out. Uh, best thing I've learned to do is use painter's tape to kinda get your lines nice and clean. You can use a Dremel. You can also use uh, any really cutting um, power tool that works well. And then just go back, clean up some of your edges just like with a file and then you should be good. Test fit it a few times and it should go back in place. Now you may not be using some of the hardware to get it back up, but that's normal and it's going to work well and still be clean. We'll just go ahead and get our hardware put back in place. Now with our panel put back in place, all that's left to do is load up our accessories and start using our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Toyota Sienna.